Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today I want to go over some basic oil pastel techniques so that you can get the most out of your oil pastels. I feel like oil pastels are becoming really popular again and uh, hopefully these basic techniques will help you out. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get a piece of drawing paper or pastel paper, something that's not super smooth. The paper I'm using is the Canson XL Sand Grain Dry Mix Media Paper. I get this by the pad at Blick. This is the um, I think it's 11 by 14 size and a pack of 40 sheets is like about $8. So it's a really affordable paper that my favorite medium on this paper is oil pastels. If you don't have that, any sort of like uh, sulfite drawing paper, anything with just a little bit of tooth to it is going to work great. Then I want you to fold it in half, fold it in half again, and then fold it in half the other way. So you have eight sections and we are going to work on that. I'd also tape down the corners just because you folded the paper and it will want to um, kind of fold up a little bit on you. So pause the video, get your paper ready, and then we are going to proceed with our techniques. The first technique I'm going to share is pretty easy. You're going to do a light application. I'm using the gray uh, paper here, the gray sand grain paper. So with a light application, you're just going to be going in and you're still going to be able to see the tooth of the paper, but you're just going to put down a very, very smooth application. It is not going to be really good coverage. The toothier your paper, the more texture you're going to see. And it's going to kind of look like um, it's going to kind of look like like children's crayons, right? It's got that nice texture to it. Now, the thing that I really like about the light application is that, say, you have a really small selection of colors, and you want to get just that perfect shade of um, of like maybe like a seafoam green. You could start with like oh, maybe like a teal color. The pastels I'm using are the Paul Rubens. They have a new floral set. The quality seems to be just like their original set of 50 or their pastel set. So if you like those, this just has some more floral colors in it. I think I've reviewed them already on my channel. I know I've done other projects with them if you want to go check it out. All right, so you put down that light color and you're like, oh, I want that to be a little bit more green, maybe a little bit of pastel green. So what you can do is you can go over with a light application of the green. And you can see as you put that second application down, you start to get a nice color mix. And I'm not using any pressure, so you shouldn't be getting any sort of um, uh, soreness with your hands. This is a great way to put like a big background in somewhere where you want to get just the right color. And then maybe you're like, ah, I wish that was a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit darker. I think I would like it to be a little darker blue. So I can go in and add, I can add a little bit of a, like a Prussian blue. And since you're just using a light application, you can keep adding more colors until you get just the color that you want. And then of course you can go right in with your fingers and you can mix those colors together and look how nice and smooth they mix. If you had gone in with a heavy application first, you would probably not be able to layer up because you would have filled the tooth of your paper. And look at that, you get a really nice mix when you do that. I'll hold this up closer to the camera at the end of the video so that you'll be able to see that. I'll wipe my hand on her. On a rag. So the next thing we're going to show you is a heavy application. So heavy application is just like it sounds. You're going to be putting down a thicker application of color and you're going to see you get a little bit of a, of a like a crumbly, you know, you get a little bit of crumbly bits where the, the pastel kind of comes off because you're using a little more force. You can go in with your finger and you can smooth those out. So if you don't need to mix a custom color, you can very quickly get that nice opaque coverage with a heavy application. So see, very similar effects, but this one, we needed to use three colors to get what we wanted. That one, we had just the perfect color, so we just used a heavy application. So it's a really nice uh, nice way to fill in a large area. The next one I'm gonna go to is blending a gradient, and we're gonna be using the heavy application technique. And let's choose some colors. Let's make a nice pretty, um, oh, kind of like a rainbow. So we'll take some red. We'll take some orange, we'll get some yellow. So these colors are going to be a little bit different than the way you get in your basic set there. They're specially designed for florals. They did send me these um, to review or, or to demonstrate on my channel, so I just want to be fully transparent there. Um, let's see, we're going to need to go with like a little bit of a lighter yellow before we go to green. And let's see, maybe like a 
a tealy blue. That's enough colors there. All right, so we'll do. Oh, this is a really pretty. Kind of reminds me of those vintage sunsets. Isn't that nice? So these these are. This is a really pretty set here. So blending and gradient. I'm gonna start off with my red, and I'm gonna use a. I'm gonna start with a heavy application, but then I'm gonna I'm gonna go to a light application. Okay. So then I'll take the orange, and I'm gonna go a heavy application right next to the um, the light application. And then I'm going to bring a lighter application down lower, but I'm going to work back over the light application of the red. So I use that lighter application so I know it would stick. Okay? And then I'm going to go in with the yellow, a heavy application below the light application. And then I'm going to go with a light application over the light application. <clears throat> so we'll get that blending there. Oh yeah, and we'll do a light application below so we can blend into it. So we use a light application so we don't, and I've got stuff on my fingers, so I've transferred some uh, some green on there because I had it on my fingers, I didn't realize it. So heavy, we're going to go over with light, then we're going to do a little bit of light underneath. Then we're going to go into the screen, we're going to do heavy underneath our light application. Then we're gonna just going to go over it, over the light application with the green. And we'll do a little light application of the green below. And then finally we'll do our blue. Alright, so we've got a nice gradient there, but to get it a little bit more blended, then we will, well, I'll put those away. Right then we can just kind of go in with our fingers and blend it a little bit. I use my fingers probably more than anything for a tool because they're always, they're always there. I'll switch to a, um, to a clean one as I get down to the yellows. But you get the idea. Obviously you can pick your colors with a little bit more thought and you can spend a little more time, but that's your basic gradient. That's a, I love that color, that color scheme though. I think I might have to I think I might have to use that color scheme for something. And I should have used a little more tape to tape this down because of the, the amount that I'm uh, moving it. The next technique is a really fun one, especially with oil pastels, and that would be the stippling technique. And um, if you ever have ever uh, heard of the Impressionist painters, the DuPointillism, that's what they use, a stippling technique. So instead of mixing, instead of mixing or blending, they would do dots of color next to each other and let it visually mix. Let it. Um, Let your eyeballs mix it. So that could be like a hydrangea blossom. I'm going to do another, another purple in there. And oil pastels are really nice for that, especially these soft ones, because they give up, they give you so much. Give you so much color. Maybe I'm going to do another little head on that flower. Do the highlights with the lighter color. Of course, take take your time and enjoy this. I'm just trying to give you kind of a really quick overview of our different techniques. I could go in with some green. You can common, you can use combinations of techniques. Like I could use, let's do a darker one. I could use, oh, this one's pretty. I could use, I'm just making a line. And I could just kind of lightly draw a shape and I could stipple it in or I could color it in and blend it. You can do whatever you want really. But that stippling technique is really fun. If you work with children, you could show them work of um, George Sherratt and like the, um, the famous painting Sunday in the Park with George, any of his work really, and show them the stippling technique and it's a really fun technique, especially for youngsters. And it gives you beautiful texture. It's just, it's a very pleasing, pleasing look. The next one I'm going to show you is called Scraffito. And this is almost like doing a scratch board. This is also a way you can do your own scratch board. And I would start with like a lighter color. And you're just going to kind of fill in an area. And you can do a multiple colors. You can make it rainbow, whatever you like. I'm not putting that much down. It's kind of in between a light and heavy application. And then I like to blend that in. I mean, you don't have to put a color down below, but whatever color you have first is generally what's going to show through your Scraffito. And then I'm just going to go over it with, um, oh, let's do maybe like a darker, a darker purple color. And we're going to be getting a heavy application even without a lot of work because we've already got some of the tooth filled in. 
And what you use to scratch back can be whatever you like. Um, you can use a toothpick, you can use a palette knife, you could use a cut up piece of credit card. I'm gonna use a palette knife because I've got, got it right here. This paper has some good sizing in it, so it tends to scrape back to the gray, but if I go lightly, I can scrape back to the pink. You can do all sorts of patterns. You can even scrape larger amounts down if you want to. It's a great way to do like veins on a leaf. So you can have fun with that technique. That's a lot of fun to play with. Now the next technique I wanna show you is a pasta with a knife. And I would recommend that um, you practice this with less expensive, past less expensive pastels. And for that, you could scrape off a little bit of pastel with your palette knife and apply it like that. Just kind of like you would with oil paint. Maybe you want to do a, uh, let's do some blues. Let's try to do like maybe like, um, like a wave or something or some water or something. I don't have a reference I'm looking at, so I'm just going to be kind of approximating this. I'm going to get that maybe choppy C. Now, of course, this is going to use up more material because you are you are using more more product. You can keep it fairly thin, or you can layer it much thicker to get like more texture. Keep in mind the oil pastels don't really dry, so it will always have a bit of a, of stickiness to it, so you definitely would want to mat it or put spacers and put it behind glass, as you would with any work on paper. But this is really fun for like um, impressionism or abstract work. I mean, it's just kind of pretty to look at it, even though I don't really have too much structure going on here. Another thing I recommend when you're getting to oil pastels is I'm gonna wipe my um, knife off. Is that you get some extra white pastels? I know Paul Rubens sells a pack of I think it's like six whites. I bought it at one point, and they do offer extra whites in some of their sets. So you know if you're ordering a set, you might look at the color, uh, the picture of the inside of the box, and see like if it comes with more whites, and if not. It's not very expensive, but I do like the Paul Rubens whites. So even if you're using another brand, their white um, edition is nice. Cause I don't know, I don't know how all, every brand's whites are. Sennelliers are nice, but they're really soft and really expensive. So I wouldn't recommend them for this technique. I think it would be a little too sticky and greasy for that. This is a really nice texture, but it's soft enough to apply with a knife, but it's also um, firm enough to hold its shape and it's not, terribly expensive so there so I think that looks so fun and it's like you can run your fingers across it and feel it but you will see so you will kind of uh, you will disturb it a bit so keep that in mind and I'll hold this up at the end of the video so you can see all those textures all right the next thing I want to share is using blending tools now my favorite ones I don't know where I put them they are silicone they're silicone tip nail tools like for fingernails you can also find them in craft stores usually if they have like painting knives or sometimes in the stamping department but they're a they're a tool like this but instead of rubber they're silicone and those are my favorite if anybody knows where I put them because you've seen me a craft room tour recently or you saw me use them in a recent tutorial please let me know because I cannot find them and it's driving me nuts. I've looked at my gel printing stuff. I've looked in where I usually keep them in a handy bin that's right where I can reach them. I have no idea what I did with them. But uh, using blending tools is really handy. Uh, let's say we want to do, let's do, um, let's do like a, a gold ball. Let's start with brown. Let's pretend the light is coming from over there because I've got more brown on this side already. And let's use, oh, let's use some of this, this pretty ochre color for a highlight. Let's put a little bit of, a little bit of orange in there. We can blend it in. And overlap our colors. Using a little bit of this um, peachy color on top. I think I need a little bit darker of a brown. Let's do this one. 
as you can probably see, it can be difficult to, re to get a nice, sharp, fine edge. So that's where our blending tools can be really handy. Okay, so then you can take any of these blending tools, like this is a paper stump. These are very affordable. You can get these in a pack for a couple dollars at any craft store, or Amazon. See how we're getting that nice refined edge? That's one tool you can use. You can use these rubber tip tools. Sometimes these are sold with like toll painting supplies. Of course, these are the rubber and silicone tip tools are really easy to clean. With these, you could wipe them on a rub them on a piece of sandpaper to clean them. I but again, see the rubber tip ones are a little harder, and they kind of want to scraffito. They kind of want to scratch in like. See, so I think they're a little kind of hard for um, for the blending. You can use a makeup applicator, but they will pick up some of this. They'll, they'll actually pick up and redistribute some of the colors. So that's almost more if you want to like soften something in the middle because it does it does pick up. I would actually just use my fingers for that, but that does pick up quite a bit. So um, you just be aware of that. And you can use a Q-tip. A Q-tip works pretty well. I was actually surprised at how well the paper stump worked. And then, uh, since I can't find my silicone tip tools, I do have just a, like a silicone spatula. Because it is so like gentle and soft, it doesn't provide a lot of friction and it doesn't um, remove much while you're blending. It kind of leaves everything on the paper. So those are some blending tools that you can use. But if you're going to go buy some, go to Amazon, look for silicone tip nail tools. I'll try to remember to link it down below. But um, yeah, they're very inexpensive for like a set of, of like five or ten. You can get them for under ten dollars. The next technique I'm going to share is using solvents. And um, let's see, let's do a, well, since this is a flower set, let's do a flower petal. Let's just do... Let's do like a side view of a poppy here. I'm going to start with this dark red down at the bottom. I'm going to work my way up to this kind of this brighter red. Hmm. Let me see if I have a peachy. Ooh, this is pretty right here. It's pretty peachy color. We'll work up to that one. over those edges there. So for solvents, um, I like to use Gamzol. I keep it in a little container like this and I have um, I have cotton balls in there so I don't have a bunch of liquid. I pour enough Gamzol in there to saturate the cotton balls and that's it. And then whatever you want to use for a for a um, uh, for an applicator, you can use your cotton ball, you can use a paper stump, you can use a paintbrush whatever you want, whatever you think works good for you. Um, the the, uh, just the cotton buds here, they are going to be, they're not going to last for too long before you have to replace them, but they're very inexpensive. So, you know, that's kind of nice just to kind of let you know there. Um, I always have a couple brushes handy and I use these also for colored pencils and solvents. So I just also to clean them, I just wipe them on a on a cotton ball. When the cotton balls get too nasty, I just uh, chuck them and I add a couple of new cotton balls and new solvent and it's very easy. You don't want to have too much solvent and any paint thinner or turpentine will work, but I recommend the Gamzol just because it's not very, um, it's not very strong and you want just enough to uh, help it kind of melt. But you can help get some edges back that way. And it works really well, and I'm just going to wipe off my... Oh, I feel like I'm mumbling. Sorry about that, guys. I'm just going to wipe off my brush before I put it away. You can see the oil pastels, they are going to dirty your little jar of solvent or your cotton balls much quicker than colored pencils, because I use these brushes for colored pencils, too. So just keep that in mind. You'll need to replace the cotton balls more often um, when you're using this method with the um, with solvents, but it's not it's not that big of a deal. Now, the other thing that I want to show you is basically the same technique, but with... Uh, colored pencils to refine the edges. Let's do, let's do a carnation. So I'm just going to go in there. I'm just going to put in some nice expressive strokes for my petals. Let's do, let's do some red. And I love to let these, um, 
I love to let these strokes show because I think they're really they're really pretty to have those strokes in there, but sometimes you just need to get a little bit of like definition in there. So I'm going to show you how. Well, let's do a little bit of a... I wasn't really planning a tutorial other than like a, a picture. It was more just for like a... Um, just for a demonstration. So there's our very basic carnation. I mean, it looks all right, but if you really want to make that um, that kind of stand out and look extra, look extra nice, you can use colored pencils. And I, you can go right over them. I like to use them on the sides. Now they will, like the um, the rubber tip tool, they, they can like add a little bit of a scraffito element. However, because they have pigment in it, they're, you know, some of the pigment balls up on there. I usually just kind of try to put it back on my paper so I can spread it in but you could just wipe it off on a napkin. Um, but because it's made of pigment, it's gonna leave a pigment behind. It's not gonna just scrape and leave a line, usually. Unless you're going with a really light color over, you know, a dark color, you might get a little bit of a scratch board effect, which is, you know, which is nice, but if you're trying to match a color and just kind of uh, fill in, then, then, you know, you don't really see you don't really see the difference. And my favorite pencils for this particular technique are Prismacolor Premier pencils because they are just a little bit softer than others. They just seem to work really well with this. Not to say other ones won't work. You know, you could use like the Ardex, you could use the Chromaflow. Those should all work fine. I get the best results with the Prismacolor. Just, I think it's just that, that teensy little bit less of softness and maybe they have a little bit higher oil content and that helps them that helps them a little bit, I'm not exactly sure. You can go in to, you know, add some detail back. And you'll wipe the tips off before you put your pencils away. And we'll go in with some yellow. You don't need to have your pencils super sharp for this. In fact, you know, we are using a little bit of pressure here, so if your pencils are super sharp, they're probably gonna break on you, so I wouldn't recommend that. And then if I wanted to do a little scraffito, I'm going to wipe off that tip. Um, like I could go in here, just get some kind of like a little detail on the, uh, on the petals if I wanted to there. Wiping off my tip again on my rag. I can go in there and with the reds if I want to bring out some little, little details. But that's one of my favorite techniques too, using colored pencil. So there you have it. These are my favorite techniques for using with oil pastels. I love oil pastels. I've loved them since I was in second grade and my second grade teacher would bring up cray paws. That was like my favorite day when Mrs. Poulin would bring up the cray paws and I'm still enjoying them today. So let's let's just do a review here. This is our light application. You can see that we can re really see the texture of your paper. Sometimes you want that, especially if you're going from, say, a really refined something in the center and you want to just kind of not do the entire background detailed. You just want the background to kind of like fade off into the ether. You could start with kind of like a heavier application and then let it fade out to a light application with some visible strokes. And that can look really pretty and make your background look really finished without putting in so much work and so much product over the whole entire painting. And then color mixing is when we add light application over light application over light application, and then it gives you a really beautiful blend. So you blend those colors together and it allows you to mix them very well. Here we have a heavy application. So it puts about the same amount of product as three light applications, but this is when you already have the color that you want. You can just put it down heavy. This is when you need to mix the color that you want. You, put, you layer up the light applications. Here we blended a gradient uh, by using heavy application and fading it to light and then doing a heavy application of the next color right underneath it and then fading a lighter application over the lighter application. So it's light plus light, just like we did there. And you know, we just keep feathering those colors into one another. It's heaviest when the color's on its own, but we have lighter applications below and above it to make that gradient. Here we did stippling where we just tap the pastel onto the paper. I'm hoping I can show the detail and the texture there well. This is a, a technique also called pointillism that was favored with some of the impressions painters and uh, you can look at works by Surratt if you want to learn more about that technique and see some really beautiful examples. 
And here we used blending tools. We used um, the, the paper stumped worked really well. We used a rubber tip tools. Silicone tip tools are my favorite. We used cotton buds. We used um, makeup applicator, um, but silicone tip tools and the paper compressed paper stump, I think work the best for this technique. And it allows you to get some refined edges with your pastels without bringing in another product. Here we have Scraffito, where you can put down one, two, as many layers of colors as you want, and then go back in and scrape the color away. This is great for doing details like grasses, fur, whiskers. It's also good, do, good for doing veining on leaves and flowers. It's a really fun technique. You could even do scratch board art if you took some really bright staining colors on white paper and um, uh, scribble them, let them kind of blend in and sink into the paper, and then went over it with black. You could make your own scratch boards. It's a lot of fun. This one here, we did impasto with a palette knife, and I'm just gonna, I'm hoping you can kind of see some of the texture there. I don't know, you can put more, more of that down. Just keep in mind that this, that oil pastels don't really dry on their own, so you are gonna have some stickiness there, and you'll want to make sure that it stays on the paper, so I would recommend, actually with any of these techniques, any of your artwork, with oil pastels, I would matte or use spacers and put it under glass, not plexiglass, because plexiglass has flex and it could get pushed into the surface of your painting and pick up some of the, the oil. Um, this was a blending with solvents where we used Gamzol, but any paint thinner would work fine. If you don't want to use a solvent, you could also use baby oil or mineral oil. Just keep in mind that it's going to leave you some grease, a little bit of a greasy, um, a little bit of a greasy mess, it can make your colors really transparent and kind of streaky looking. So, um, you know, it just kind of use it with caution and don't use much, le uh, just a little bit. And here we're going to finish up with one of my favorite techniques, which is using colored pencil to refine edges. You can use it with, with a scraffito technique if you use a lighter color. And it's just a great way to go in with some details at the end. And my choice pencil for this particular technique with oil pastels would be Prismacolor, but any really soft, you need a soft pencil, is going to work really well. And there you have it. Those are my favorite tips and techniques for using oil pastels. Pastels. If you have any questions, you can let me know in the comments below. Let me know what your favorite is. And hey, if you know where my silicone tip tools are, please tell me. I know I used them recently, so if you remember what tutorial I used them in, or maybe you saw my most recent craft room and you saw where I stashed them, please let me know because it's kind of driving me nuts. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. I appreciate you watching this video and I hope you found it helpful. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye!